today we're going to be making a big eye pocket stick. And although this is specifically made for the big eye fence on a Harvey table saw, there are a ton of different ways that you can use all of this knowledge to be able to create something specifically for your tools in your shop. If you have a table saw, I can almost guarantee there is a very large rectangular void on it somewhere that you can be able to create something just like this. I do have a few upgrades in mind that I'll be going over later in this video if you are looking to sell these. But before we do all that, let's go ahead and figure out how we're actually going to be making this. Now I'm starting this off in particular with one inch thick walnut. The thickness of this product is really, really important because when you're looking at the table saw, the actual fence for the table saw is right here. And the way that Harvey has set things up is they have a very movable portion right here that has a void in it. This void, we really wanna make sure, if we are just blowing that up right here, really wanna make sure that this void, we're not putting in material that's going to rattle around too much. So we wanna make sure that the material that we're cutting is nice and snug. Now, one inch thick material is going to give us a little bit of wiggle room up here, whereas three quarter inch material might give a little bit too much. We're gonna be making this project specifically in two different variants. We're going to have a very long version that is a little pocket on the end where you can put your finger to drag it in and out. And then we're gonna have pretty much the same thing, just a shorter version. This guarantees that if you have a machine that can cut 48 inch wide material, you can create the one that is purpose built for this. But if you have a smaller machine, you can still create one that still has the exact same ends on it, the way that it is interacting with the saw while still being able to create a very good product. The only difference, like I said, is the length of this. And the length is something that we really need to rely on because as you're pulling this piece out of the aluminum profile that is the big eye fence, you really want it to be able to rest on itself so that it's not fully falling out. So the actual distance of the big eye fence is 39 inches. And this little portion right here is another two inches. So if you are gonna be making this, you need at very least 41 inches to make the bigger version. And then I'm pretty sure the smaller version is around 27 inches in total length. Now the pockets in particular were really fun to make. We used fluting. And if you don't know what fluting is, let me explain it to you. Now, normally when you're CNC machining, you're going to be creating pockets and those pockets are going to go straight down into the material. So imagine this piece of wood, we have tipped it over and this is a cross section. So normally your bit is going to go down and then it's going to go over, which results in a pocket. So your bit is going to go down and it's going to clear out this amount of area and all of that is gone but that's not great when you're trying to keep in pins or something in there because it's really hard to get those out, especially in an area that is this small. It's actually under an inch and a quarter wide. So you're really just working with being able to slide in a single finger to be able to get out the object that's in there. Now that's not really gonna work great when you're running into walls. So that's why we use fluting. So now instead of the bit going down and then over, we're creating an arc with the bit. So right here, the normal process would be put your bit in, tell it exactly how deep to go and the finished depth that you're looking for, and it creates that. This is very similar, but you're also working with percentages on how deep you want each part to be. So if we wanted this to be three quarters of an inch depth in the very center, but we wanted it to flute in, we could either set it up as our in and our out, having two different percentages. So for this one in particular, I set both at 20%, meaning that as we're going into this depth, it's going to dip down. And once it gets to 20% of the halfway point of the area that it's trying to clear out, it's going to bottom out and then create a nice flat bottom. And then if the out we wanted to do at 40%, maybe that would be a little bit longer and it would cut it off right here. But we're doing 20% on both of them, which means that we're going to get a nice upward arc. Now, if your area is much larger than this, it creates some nice swooping lines, which we're able to create today. So on this overall, this area is not flat, this area is not flat, and then on and on, but the very inside of the portion of each of these pockets has a nice flat bottom. And that is the fluting option that we're going with today. That means that we're able to create a really nice looking finished product and we're not doing anything crazy as far as our machining is concerned. Now I know that can be a little bit intimidating for if you're brand new to hobby CNC machines and you're trying to figure out what that actually means. I have a complete toolpath tutorial on CNC with me where I go over this project in particular and take you from the SVGs all the way to be able to CNC machine it yourself. It's also why we have two different versions depending on the type of machine that you have. You might want to make one or the other or you might just want to use all of this as inspiration so that you can be able to create something similar for the types of tools that you have in your own shop. 
We really wanna make sure that when somebody puts this in, there's a positive stop, but it's also not continually going through. So if we just created this piece that's gonna be fitting right here, and somebody pushed it, it could go through the hole. So we want to be able to create an offset right here so that it's going to interact and positively stop against the aluminum profile. This is also where we're gonna be able to put our finger hole in. So if we're looking at it from the top, our actual piece is going to come out here and we're going to have a nice finger hole where we can put our finger in and pull this out whereas the actual piece is going to be running down this way. First and foremost, we're gonna be using our bowl cut bit. So that bit is going to be doing all of our fluting right here, and it is gonna take a little bit of time, but honestly, that's the thing that really pops about this project, and you really wanna make sure that that is a part of it, because not only for the usability, but also just for the look of it. When somebody sees that, it just looks a lot more premium to be able to have all of those swooping curves, and somebody can immediately imagine themselves and how they're going to use that, and how it's going to create a very frustration-free experience. Now, after that bit is done, is gonna create these pockets. And like I said earlier, we're gonna have these areas that are completely flat right here. And that's where we're gonna come in with our 60 degree groovy Jenny. And that is going to be engraving some text. Now, as you can see here, I'm cutting out a few of these. I'm cutting out four of the bigger versions and then two of the smaller versions. And I'm only engraving text on one of them. And that's because I set this up a few different ways in my program and I kept on running into the walls uh, with the V-bit itself. So I kept on making the text smaller and smaller. And as the text kept getting smaller, I really wanted to make sure that we got as good of an engraving as possible. And after seeing everything finished, it looks fantastic. I wish that I'd have done all of them with the text in it. So if you are gonna be downloading these files over on CNC with me, it is going to include the version that has the text on it if you want to be able to do this yourself. Now I will say, if you're using a 60 degree V-bit that is like a half of an inch wide, that's probably not gonna work. The Groovy Genie itself is 3 8 of an inch wide, so if you're using that one, you're gonna be set, but if you're using some other type of brand, make sure that the 60 degree is at very most 3 8 of an inch, something closer to a quarter of an inch will probably work a lot better because you really are engraving in a very tight area on this one. After that, we're gonna be using our downtown Jenny, and that is what is going to be doing our profiling. So we use double-sided tape to put down this project and it always works out really well for me, except when I have very wide pieces of hardwood like this. Especially when you're putting it down with double-sided tape and brad nails, you're normally adding in a little bit of tension into the project. And when you're cutting delicate things like this, especially something that's very skinny, there is a probability that it's going to push things around. And one of them did take a little bit of hit on the side, which was a downer, but it still is very functional. It's just kind of torn up near the finger hole, which obviously if it should have been torn up, I wish it had been on the other end, but c'est la vie, that's how it goes. Now, in order to do my round over, I went ahead and left everything on the CNC machine. I used the orbital sander to knock down any type of tool lines that I had. And then I came back with some foam back sandpaper to do all of the detail sanding, especially with all that fluting, with all the swoops and the bumps in there. It made for a really, really nice result. If you have like a favorite spray clear just out of a can, please leave a comment down below. I would love to know because I come from a world of table finishing where I used to mix up uh, catalyzed varnishes that were high solids and you will never get something in a can that even remotely compares to that world so I feel like I'm always disappointed when I'm using the cans but the simplicity of it you just can't beat it at all so if you have a favorite spray can that you use please leave me the brand name down below because I will definitely try it out well would you look at that that's about as big as I can make the text without the bit running into the sidewalls and creating some type of a problem I really like that detail and I feel like if you are going to be selling this, this is one of the details that is going to help sell it. Now, if you are planning on selling these, I definitely want to touch on a few things. These are all directly off the CNC machine. Obviously, I have done a small round over on them, but with the finishing process was really, really simple with the spray cans. But I think that that is going to scratch up because the inside of the aluminum profile is complete 90. They have not softened that edge at all. Why would they? So as you're pushing this in and out, it's going to interact with the sharp edge of that aluminum and it is gonna scratch it up. So I'd probably use some type of a hard oil finish on this because that is going to weather a little bit nicer and it's not going to abruptly look like things are scratched up. Obviously it's for a table saw. I think that the most people aren't going to care, but if you are selling this and somebody's buying it, you want to be able to give them as nice of a product as possible. Next up, another thing that I think will be really great is to somehow put like 
a brass sleeve in here, or if you wanna do the budget route, I think that you could rework this hole so that you could fit some like inch and a quarter, inch and a half like red pecs. And what that red pecs is, is a plastic, so you would slip it in there, epoxy it in, and then you could route it as well. But more importantly, it's really gonna match Harvey's overall color scheme and aesthetic. So it's gonna look like it's part of the saw and it's really meant to be there. So adding drawers onto tools in order to store small bits and bobs is nothing new, but it's normally done with 3D printing. And obviously there are 3D printers that are capable of doing that, but something particularly like this is much better suited for a CNC machine, especially if time is something that you value in the creation process if you're going to end up selling something like this. Chapstick. <laughs> Maybe that's another thing. I'm telling you, if you've got suggestions, let me know down in the comments down below. <laughs> so originally I was gonna be calling these the Harvey Dent sticks because it's a stick and Harvey has always reminded me of the Harvey Dent character out of Batman. So that was gonna be the little Easter egg that I put in there. But I think that the big eye pocket stick is something that is way more relatable. And the big eye is like the best thing on the market right now as far as table saw fences are concerned. That thing is built to be able to have the precision of my Onefinity CNC machine and I have just been so impressed with how well it's been built. But when I first set up the machine and as I was getting things up and running, I saw the hole in the aluminum profile and I knew exactly what I was gonna be making. And this honestly turned out way better than what I had in my head. Now, as you can see, I also threw a rolling stand underneath my saw and that has been huge in my shop in particular and getting things out of the way. Now, I have a ton of room in my shop and I would tell anybody, if you have a tool, especially if you're investing in a nice big tool, put wheels under it. It's an extra few hundred dollars. I know it's an extra expense, but it is so worth it in the long run. If you're somebody out there who has a Harvey table saw, this is gonna work, it's gonna fit perfect. You should definitely make this. If you're out there and you do not have a CNC machine and you wanna buy one of these, you're probably in luck. If one of you CNC with me members out there ends up making these and creates a listing for either your website or on Etsy, send it over to me and I will plug it in the description of this video so that anybody out in the world who's looking to buy one of these physically can be headed straight to you. Uh, I'll plug up to like five links. Uh, so whoever the first five people to send me over product listings, I will be putting those down in the description down below. Hopefully we'll get some sales. Now that I'm looking at the camera, the distortion makes these things look not flat. <laughs> look, they're flat. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you're interested in these files or the CNC community, go ahead and check it out on cncwithme.com. Otherwise, I have a YouTube video that comes out every single Friday with a brand new CNC project, and I hope to see you next Friday. All right, bye. I forgot again. Yeah, this week's mystery file is <laughs> brought to you by forgetfulness. All right, so we're using three bits and I'm not really showing you cutting because I sent my tripod with my wife to her work. So I'm just showing you the Masso controller. We are using all three bits of the only three bits that you need to see and see with me. First and foremost, we're using our bowl cut bit to cut in some type of a, I guess, a, a shallow dish. And then we're gonna use our V bit, which is weird because I think we're just marking locations. And then third, we're gonna be using our downtown Jenny and we definitely wanna make sure to forget to set our Z height and plow all the way through our wasteboard. And that is going to leave us with this. This cool little dish thing. Now, all three of the parts come together and then they form on top of this. And I'm pretty sure it's like just a nice little dish. It reminds me a whole lot of the tea light holder. And wait for it, we finally have some of the mystery files available. If you go onto your dashboard on cncwithme.com, you'll see the mitts hits. And there's four files available now. It has taken us a while to be able to get those into circulation. Some mystery files will be available going forward. Some mystery files will not be available going forward, but we do have four available and they'll be making their way on there in no determined time at all. I've just been off today. I've been off for like a few weeks. But maybe next Friday, we'll be back on and things will be a little bit better because July is coming. And I got to do a lot of work for that. Mitz has been working his little butt off. But see you all next Friday. Bye.